Hi, everybody. Welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. I got this email from Preston Brown. Hashtag flood. Hey, Jared. Hope you're doing well. And then he shares uh, the Book of Mormon that he shared. But I'm not, I, I blacked out this part because it could identify who he is. And so it's just sensitive information. Continuing. Also, I emailed last week with thoughts about April 2020. I know you get tons of emails. Yeah, correct. Uh, as you can see right here, top left, I currently have 2,110 unopened emails. And then I have 3,057 total in my inbox and many more that I have replied to um, and also deleted. It's just, it's impossible. So congratulations, Preston. You made it. Um, I don't expect a reply. Thank you. Or even know if you're able to read it. Well, I, I, I am. Thanks to you. We've been looking a lot closer to April 2020 and what may have happened. One thing I love about your channel is that it's not very speculative, quote unquote. Well, I guess it depends on who you talk to. Some people feel like it's too speculative. Other people not. Um, I try I try and just like stick to just what the prophets say. And, and I like to look at uh, signs and I'm very symbolically minded, but... Yeah, I think sometimes people go a little bit too far or don't have enough substance or they start teaching their speculation as though it's true. And I try to avoid that the best that I can. But but thank you, Preston, for saying that. Uh, you do such a great job on finding the right balance. <clears throat> but approaching April 2020 conference with the possibility that it may have been the Adam on Diamond visit of the Savior has been enlightening. Yes, and uh, and let me just clarify. I'm sure this is what you meant, but um, we've talked about this concept several times on the channel, how uh, that particular conference, April 2020 General Conference, may have been a part of Adam on Diamond. We learned from um, Bruce R. McConkie that Adam on Diamond is most likely to be um, made up of multiple sessions. Uh, he even seems to suggest that some of it will be for, that Christ will go from continent to continent in uh, different gatherings. And I don't know if he means literally like you will actually physically see him there or if he's uh, he is there, but you can't see him. I don't know. I've looked at all these different um, area devotionals that have been taking place, which are really interesting. Um, but whatever the case, uh if you want to know more about Adam on Diamond, uh, I have my playlist called Adam on Diamond, where I go through everything that I know of um, that's been said by by any general authority. I have everything on that playlist. And um, it seems that the main reason for Adam on Diamond is the transfer of priesthood keys. Right now, it's Adam that he's the one that administers the keys. He's uh, been doing that ever since uh, his own time. He's the one that ultimately is highest in the priesthood um, for the human family. And so whenever the, the keys have come to earth, it's been under his administration. But since Christ is going to be here personally, he's going to take over that role and receive the keys back. So that's one thing. Uh, the reporting of stewardships, which I have a lot of questions about that. I don't know if it's literally every single person that's held keys or if it's uh, more like general, like you have general authorities that repeat. I, I don't know. Um, it's it's a little bit unclear. And then also, um, there's a judgment that comes upon the saints. Uh, I, I don't know what that entails, just that there's some kind of judgment. Uh, I don't know if it's related to reporting of what you did with your priesthood keys. And then in addition, uh, Christ is going to give instructions to the priesthood. And, and it's essentially a time where Adam and Christ prepares for the second coming. And so uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this general conference was part of that, you know, um, there's so much more I could say, but just go check out that playlist for Adam on Diamond. But I would not be surprised if this was part of it uh, with all the things that we did in that particular conference. And so with that being said, let's continue with Preston's email. Uh, in President Nelson's introduction, he said this, and uh, let's just go directly to it. Okay, so April 2020 opening message, President Nelson. And at the end... This is the part that uh, Preston shares. Welcome to April 2020 General Conference. I know that God, our Heavenly Father, and His Son, Jesus Christ, are mindful of us. They will be with us throughout the proceedings of these two glorious days as we seek to draw closer to them and honor them. And so, in response to that, um, 
person says, I wonder how literal he was. Yeah, and I do too. A lot of people, uh, certainly some of you, are going to be like, oh, you're just reading too much into it. I just go move on. And uh, yeah, maybe you're right. I don't know. But maybe you're not. Maybe he actually meant that. I did a search for this, by the way. Uh, they will be with us or um, similar phrases. And I could not find anything like this in the Scripture Citation Index. If you don't know what that is, it's this website put together by BYU. You can come down here to the right, the bottom right, click on search, and you can search either talks or the scriptures. And you can search um, general conference talks going back to 1942. And no one has said anything like this that I'm aware of. So he may have actually meant that. That, uh, of course, you know, they're always with us. They're with you personally as you live in your covenants. They're with us at church. But I think that this may have been a little bit more on the literal side, as in no, the April 2020 General Conference is different. They are, you know, personally in some kind of way uh, overseeing this. Remember, this is happening against the backdrop of uh, the pandemic, uh, a time that I think was the height or at least one of the heights of Satan's power where uh, the, all the temples were closed and missionary work was hindered. And uh, it just seemed like a time of Satan's power where he was able to mess up so many people's lives. And uh, it happened in that year, 2020. Um, in addition, President Nelson said all this stuff uh, before he he wrapped this message up. He says, uh, well, first, okay, this year we commemorate the 200th anniversary of one of the most significant events in the history of the world, namely the appearance of God the Father and his beloved son, Jesus Christ, to Joseph Smith. During that singular vision, God the Father pointed to Jesus Christ and said, This is my beloved Son, hear him. All right, and then later, he says, We pray that this conference will be memorable and unforgettable because of the message, messages you will hear, the unique announcements which will be made, and the experiences in which you'll be invited to participate. So he's really highlighting how important and how unique this conference is, and he wants it to be unforgettable. And uh, that would make even more sense if it if it did turn out that this was part of um, the sessions of Adam on Diamond. And he says, for example, at the conclusion of the Sunday morning session, we will convene a worldwide solemn assembly uh, when I will lead you in the sacred Hosanna shout. Again, this is the only time that a solemn assembly has been called like this. We have it whenever there's a, a change from one president of the church to the other. Uh, we did a Hosanna shout. Uh, with the general with the conference center when it was dedicated, but it was not a solemn assembly. Um, you can look it up again. Look at the scripture citation index. Just do a search for solemn assembly, and they do not say that during that general conference. So, as far as I know, in general conference, this is the only time that there's been a solemn assembly um, held or or convened um, outside of the usual transfer from one prophet to another. And then Hosanna shout, <coughs> excuse me, we pray that this will be a spiritual highlight for you as we express in global unison. Okay, that's kind of an important thing. Global unison. That sounds very Adam on Diamond like Our profound gratitude to God the Father and his beloved Son by praising them in this unique way. For this sacred experience, we use clean white handkerchiefs. Uh, if you do not have one, you may simply wave your hand. At the conclusion of the Hosanna shout, the congregation will join with the choir in singing the Spirit of God. My dear brothers and sisters, this conference will be magnificent. This year will be extraordinary as we focus intently on the Savior and his restored gospel. The most important and lasting effects of this historic conference will be as our hearts change and we commence a lifelong quest to hear him. Welcome to April 2020 General Conference. I know that God, our Heavenly Father, and His Son, Jesus Christ, are mindful of us. They will be with us through the, the proceedings of these two glorious days as we seek to draw closer to them and honor them. Uh, just one more, one more thing that came to mind. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, well, not this. Here's the Flood the Earth Challenge. Um, I haven't updated it since the 9th, um, but we're doing really well. Keep it up. If you share a Book of Mormon, let me know and make sure to include hashtag flood so I can find your comment on any video. It doesn't matter what video. Just make sure to include hashtag flood and uh, or you can send me an email, but please still use hashtag flood. 
helps me find your email. Uh, I want to remind you just really quick before I forget about it on my quotes A through Z spreadsheet for, uh, let's see, appearances, Adam on Diamond, currently on row 13. Uh, there is reason to believe that this could have been part of, of um, Adam on Diamond. President Jeffrey R. Holland at the time, um, Elder Jeffrey R. Holland of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, in uh, October 2006 General Conference, a talk called Prophets in the Land Again, he says this, as, pro- as prophets have done in dispensations from Adam down to the present day, President Hinckley has figuratively called a, gathered us in a kind of global equivalent of the Valley of Adamondiamen. Uh, has loved us and taught us and bestowed upon us his blessing. He, I've noted a number of times, he likes to drop breadcrumbs, and I think that's one of them, letting us know that hey, maybe this is how uh, our participation in Adam and Amen will happen, which I know is not very exciting because all of us would like to be like magically transported there or somehow all 17 million people or half of that fit into Adam and Amen. But I think that this is how it happens, or that is my best guess, but I'm not going to limit myself to that. We'll just see what happens, but it may have already happened. Let's see, of the quorum, oops, sorry, quorum of the 12 apostles. This is one of my earlier quotes on this spreadsheet, and I've changed the format over time, and I just, I didn't put... Um, his priest office. So I'm adding that right now as I'm thinking about it. Okay. So really cool. That conference was something else. And I, I, I don't think that we fully understand everything that happened, uh, but I think that we will. So thanks for pointing that out, Preston. And then after that, he says, accompanied with another great April, 2020 quote, you already have. Okay. Accompanied with other great April, 2020 quotes, you already have like my favorite from Elder Rasband's talk, uh, that conference, Fulfillment of Prophecy, and then he quotes it, and uh, this is what he, what he said. Okay, I have it highlighted. We live in that prophesied, okay, we live in that time prophesied. We are the people charged with ushering in the second coming of Jesus Christ. We are to gather God's children, those who will hear and embrace the truths, covenants, and promises of the everlasting gospel. So that's a pretty clear statement. We are the people charged. And in October 2020, sorry, October 2022 General Conference, um, that's when President Nelson just flat out called on us to be the people of the second coming, just explicitly, just like that. And somehow it still goes over people's heads. Oh my gosh, right here, Daniel. Look, he included a picture of Daniel. Daniel is, uh, if you if you if you read the scriptures in order of Bible and then Book of Mormon and DNC and then Pearl of Great Price, Daniel is the first one that talks about Adam and Um, If we're not talking about the uh, Joseph Smith translation, if I if I remember, I think in Genesis there's a Joseph Smith translation that talks about Adam and Diamond. But if you don't count that. Daniel is the first one that talks about Adam and Diamond because essentially from the time of Babylon, represented by the gold head of the statue of King Nebuchadnezzar's dream, down to the toes, which is, this is basically a timeline to our own time. Um, we've had these uh, large empires and powers uh, that have had power in this world. They've persecuted the saints and and stuff like that. And it's all coming to an end. And uh, it officially comes to an end at Adam and Diamond, because that's where Christ assumes the kingdom. And then, of course, there's more actions after that, but that's where he officially um, uh, uh, has his coronation, essentially, is Adam and Diamond. So that's interesting. Um, Okay, cool. And then after that, he says, also, Elder Kieran's... um, Oh, yeah, and by the way, um, I have all the, all these quotes. If you want to access these again, I have this spreadsheet called Quotes Second Coming. I have a number of quotes spreadsheets, but they're, they all have different purposes. So this one is Quotes Second Coming. And uh, I have everything that I feel relates to the second coming or is just very unique and probably in preparation for the second coming. So we just went over this one. 
Um, I didn't I didn't have this on here before, so I just added it. the 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 one that talks about they will be with us through the throughout the proceedings of these two glorious days. I'm gonna highlight that to you. Okay, so we got that, and thanks to Preston for that. In fact, I need to give him credit right here. Preston Brown, thank you. And then here's the one that we just read from Elder Rasband. Like he said, I already have it on here. You know, in fact, I have it as one of my highlighted ones because the ones that I feel really stand out, I have them highlighted in this kind of cream color. And then uh, the one that we're going to read now from Elder Kieran is my newest one. But uh, it turns out... Okay, because I already had one here from Elder Kieran, and it's from the same occasion. Uh, it's from the same day, the 23rd of January. Uh, what we went over last time was this. Let me just read this first. Uh, this is from a uh, church news article uh, on the church uh, thechurchnews.com. Okay, he says, I attest to the fact that our Savior will come back, and we will be healed of everything that has has been a burden to us. Uh, we just have to do our part. And then later on in the article, he says, we know the final outcome. We know that Jesus Christ will return and he will bring healing and comfort. Okay, so he says that from this article, but what I, I guess I didn't know, there's this other article that we're going to look at. Uh, this is on uh, the church's website, Newsroom. Elder Kieran's message to news media, turn to the source of all peace, Jesus Christ. Elder Patrick Kieran of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles spent nearly three hours on Tuesday, January 23rd, 2024, answering the questions of news media gathered in the Relief Society building on Temple Square in Salt Lake City. Um, just for the fun of it, just in case you don't know, I think it's good for all of us to be familiar with Temple Square, so let's go there. I don't know if you've been there before. Uh, let me know if you have or if you haven't been to Temple Square. I myself have been there a billion times because I lived just down the road for a couple of years in the avenues on First Avenue. It was literally just right down the road. It was one of the coolest times of my life. Okay, um, here we go. Right? Here's the temple. Here's the tabernacle, church, office building. The Relief Society building is this one right here. And then this is the administration building, which has the offices of the, you know, the first presidency and the 12. Uh, at least that's my understanding, right? It's for all 15. Is there anybody else that's in here, like any other, like 70s or anything? If you know, let me know. I don't know much about it, but I know that um, you at least have the prophet, his office is in here. But anyway, so here's the Relief Society building right here. Just catty corner. Uh, from the conference center. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Now remember, uh, one thing that really stands out, at least to me, with Elder Kieran is that uh, he was raised in the UK and the Middle East. Raised there for some of his childhood, I guess, um, or teenage years. And then he's lived and worked in the UK in Saudi Arabia so just the fact that he has that experience in the Middle East, uh, that's probably, I would imagine that's going to come into play uh, during his ministry, and we'll just have to see how that goes. But anyway, here's the part um, that Preston wants to point out. Okay, Elder Kieran left a special parting word of comfort for people in need of healing. Quote, to anyone who's hurting, feeling alone, feeling forgotten, feeling neglected or mistreated, I pray that you will find peace from the source of all peace. In that, and from the love of your heavenly, of your Father in heaven, who adores you, believe it or not, Elder Kieran said. And then continuing, his son, our Savior, will put all of this right for you, and I hope soon, but certainly ultimately. That's my wish, and it's also my promise on his behalf. So, this um, this goes along with that other quote that I already had from the other article where he's talking about, when he says, I hope soon, he's talking about the second coming. In this other article, he says, I attest to the fact that our Savior will come back and we will be healed of everything that has, has been a burden to us. Um, we just have to do our part. Now, I did a video about this, and, um, you know, some people liked it, some didn't, because 
uh, w- one of the touchy subjects always. And I understand, I understand, like, it's not like I'm, you know, exempt from this, uh, is that at the second coming, we are going to have a different, the, families are going to be rearranged. Okay. And that's going to be painful, obviously. But for those that are lacking family, people who uh, don't have brothers and sisters, people that do have brothers and sisters, but they're telestial, they're, they're toxic, they're, they're not nice, they're unkind, they're whatever. Um, there, there's, there are so many people that are hurt. Like if you have like a, a, a good family, then great. I'm glad that you have a happy family. But there are people, there are those of us who have abusive and um, family that don't love us. Okay. I'm, I'm approaching it from that point of view, family that do not love us. And don't, don't say that. I don't know. It, you, you're not in my position and you're not in the position of other, of other people that feel that way. There are people uh, in this life, family, friends, otherwise that are abusive, toxic, um, all these different things. And everybody deserves to have a loving, kind mother and father, not perfect. Not, not everybody's, you know, you don't have to be perfect, but there are some people that are very, very lacking when it comes to love in relationships and, um, and all that stuff. And so there's going to be a lot of hearts that are healed at the time of the second coming. Let's just put it that way. And he seems to be pointing to that. Uh, there's also going to be in that video, I also covered the fact that uh, we are literally going to be healed because we're going to have quickened bodies. Remember, Bruce R. McConkie and others have said during the millennium, there are going to be two types of people. There are going to be resurrected beings, people who have already died. Now they're resurrected. And then you're going to have the rest of us that are still alive and in the millennium, but our bodies are going to be changed, not to a resurrected state yet, but they're going to be quickened. And part of that includes uh, no more pain or suffering and no disease which is amazing because think of everyone, including uh, you, I'm sure, I'm sure you have something wrong with your body and me, you know, I've said a number of times, I I wish I had hearing in my right ear again. I was very sad when that happened. It was right after the army. I lost, just lost hearing in my right ear. Um, you know, sleep apnea, um, my back, just so many things. I don't need to list them all. There's more. It's going to be great to be healed from that and to not have to deal with that nonsense anymore. So <clears throat> physical healing, spiritual and emotional and psychological healing, that's all going to take place. And that's something to look forward to. And it's, it's, it makes me very happy. Um, you know, and I hope the best for everybody. <clears throat> I hope that people will change and repent and maybe, uh, develop a heart, you know, uh, just like the Grinch, maybe grow a heart. Uh, that would be amazing, but we'll just see how things go. Hope for the best, but be prepared for the worst. But whatever the case, if we do our best, we'll be there and we're going to have healing in, in all sorts of different ways. And, uh, he talked about that. Okay. So let's see. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. So, and then he says, thanks thanks again for all your time and research. That helps us all as we come closer to our Savior. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for your email. And thank, uh, I want to thank all of you that watch. I hope that you get something out of this and that uh, the channel is more good than it is bad and um, that it helps everybody just prepare for the reality, the reality of the second coming. And, um, and hopefully through doing things like the flood the earth challenge hopefully we're getting other people ready so we can do more than just make youtube videos or watch youtube we can actually do important things and do missionary work and we can go to the temple and we can do family history and we can uh, do our ministering so all right well that's gonna be it for this one if you haven't already please make sure to subscribe like this video if you liked it leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below also make sure to share it and i'll talk to you guys later